welcome to The Near Memo, a weekly conversation about search, social, and commerce. What happened, why it matters, and the implications for local. One of the things, are, Mike, I don't want to cut you off if you're still talking. No, no, about no. This is, this is, so, this could, is okay, all right. Well, so, all right. So this is this is the segue into my my topic, which is kind of the same topic, which is kind of this is an interesting moment in search and on mobile devices in particular. Um, because, so we were talking before we started recording about the Reddit thread that I wrote about yesterday, where one of the Google, one of the Bard product managers uh, said, hey, everybody on Reddit, what do you think of, you know, what, tell us what features you want on in Bard. And it got a lot of responses. It's really interesting to, to kind of read what people are interested in. And you can, you can get that link uh, off of the, the near memo from, from Wednesday. It's, it's in there. And I, su- I tried to summarize the ones that were kind of at the top of the list. Um, although there are, there are hundreds in there and, and a couple of things struck me about that. One was, you know, people were asking for things that chat GPT can already do like upload documents and, and generate images, and that stuff will all come in 2024 at a Bard, I'm sure. Um, but they seem to, the, in my sort of anecdotal overview of the suggestions, there were kind of two categories that they fell into. I mean, you know, some of them were making generic requests, but but one of them sort of seemed to be specific to the individuals. Like, uh, I needed to be able to do this, this kind of coding capability, or this kind of document analysis, or um, you know, I'm trying to use it as a writing assistant. And every time I use the word naked, it censors me. And so why don't you get rid of that? Well, that one guy actually said that. Uh, yeah. Like, <laughs> he's trying to say, he's trying to use descriptive terminology to, you know, she she and took off her clothes. Naked and ambition. It. Well, no, no, no. It was, no, it was literally about, like, somebody had taken, the example was somebody took off their clothes and got into the shower. And this was a part of a story. Uh-huh. And it wasn't, yeah. it wasn't erotica or porn or anything it was like this guy was trying to write a descriptive discussion and and you know because it flags certain concepts and terms so he was there's saying a nan- you there's know, a nanny bot not just in gbp but also in bard color me shock well and bard, also but in copilot as well i've noticed that copilot's yeah. imagery that i generate is much more benign than what i generate in uh Dolly right. or ChatGPT. I'm looking for non-benign because I'm criticizing Google and I'm suggesting illegal activities and I can't get a picture that looks like anything other than a Muppet out of, uh, right. out of <laughs> Copilot. So, pe- so people had these very specific suggestions like that, or they were kind of asking for really broad functionality. Make this a more complete assistant for me. Make it, make it have all these additional capabilities uh, you know, search my documents and uh, deeper integration with this and that and the other. And, and, and nobody was saying, nobody seemed to be directly saying, there were a couple of people who talked about search, make the search better, but nobody seemed to be saying, I want to use BART as a replacement for Google immediately. And so make it more like Google, but you know, no ads and et cetera. And, and so that was kind of interesting to me. It's like a very sort of specific features or functions and this other thing which is this broader assistant capability which i think is the successor to traditional search but we're not there and i think the 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 moment we're in is really interesting because as you're saying mike you know if apple loses this default search deal maybe there will be an opening for you know microsoft with copilot or or different apps um you know Apple, Apple itself with some in, in, to Siri on steroids or something like that. And I, I find that I'm much less brand loyal. I mean, I'm not loyal to Google, but my behavior is. I'm much less brand loyal on mobile than I am on the desktop, you know, where I'm using Chrome and I'm just using that, you, you know, the URL bar to search for things. But on mobile, I'm much more deliberate and I'm using Copilot, and I'm using ChatGPT, and so my, my as, as I've said before, my usage of Google has declined, uh, especially on mobile. And you know, back to your topic, David, about SGE. You know, if you if you do a search on your on your device, regardless of how big the screen is, a lot of those SGE results are the whole screen. That's the whole screen, mm-hmm. and you know, 
in five out of 10 cases, I just don't want to see that, you know, I want to get mm -hmm. to a specific thing. And so I do think we're in inter very interesting time. Now, maybe that Google overcomes this, all of this and reestablishes itself, you know, tightens its grip on the user, but um, I, I, hopefully not. Hopefully there'll be some more competition and we'll see better, better Siri, you know, the, the potential is certainly there and hopefully a Apple will see this opportunity and, and really commit to it, right? It's been, it's been really ambivalent because of the money. And so now if that's taken out of the equation, maybe they'll just totally commit to building a better assistant. And they, in a way they have to, because Google is doing that for Android, you know? And to some extent, you know, Bard, uh, is Google Assistant with Bard, for example, is exemplary of, of where AI, generative AI needs to go. It, as a standalone app, it, it isn't going to replace search. And other than people, creatives, that I need graph illustrations, for example, or marketing people need ad copy, most people don't need generative AI as a chat GPT interface in their lives. What they need is a better word processor, a better email program, a better reminder, a better calendar. And that's what Google is doing with Note LM, LL, uh, whatever, Notebook LLM. Or Notebook whatever. LLM, yeah. yeah. And with Assistant, they're basically integrating barred functionality into apps which is where Apple's opportunity is as well. And Microsoft's to a large extent, the difference between those three is that Microsoft doesn't have a platform upon which to put default apps where both apps. Well, and, we're, and Meta is out there too, you know? Yeah, I, I think they're gonna be, as my father used to say, sucking hind tit in this. <laughs> well, it, it's the, it's the an use case for eating dog AI raising adds. days, right? It's a, the pup that doesn't get to the mother's teeth. Oh, I see, I see. I, right. I'm it's surprised you hadn't heard that before. Even, even I've heard that phrase before, Greg. Yeah. I, I've, right. not, um, I've not heard it. I've not heard it. Can't Probably can't but, put that into ChatGPT and get a response. Probably, or certainly not Bard. Um, certainly not but Bard, my, right. the, I, What is the, like, to, what, what purpose does AI to help your social behavior really serve, right? There's not this, like, pressing business well, need I'll that I'll, both Microsoft and Google and even Apple can We're, we're talking B2B. We're talking but we're talking B2B, right? There's a lot of B2C use cases for AI and social, which we don't need to digress into. But, you know, how does talking... that help Facebook make money, though? I don't, I'm like at a loss. Well, to engagement, that, engagement, so. drawing people no. back, you know, I mean, the, the thing that's, that's kind of creepy and interesting to me about what Facebook's doing with these uh, AI avatars for celebrities that they've paid is that, is that people seem quite willing to have conversations. I don't have any data on this, but this is my sort of sense. People seem quite willing to engage with these fake AI generated avatars. And um, just as uh, 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 I was going to write about this in the context of the open AI copyright litigation with the New York Times, but there's a psychologist named Martin Seligman, who's, who's now I think in his 80s, late 80s or 90s, and he's quite a famous person within the field. And some, a former student and some other folks in China created a, a, a fake version of him, <laughs> plugging, taking all his writings from 50 plus years of academic work and mm -hmm. popular writing, plugged it into an LLM, trained it, and then created, you know, a bot that could respond to questions like him. And his wife even said it was remarkably consistent with his own personality. And mm -hmm. and when you combine that with sort of the imagery that now can, you know, deep fakes and voice AI, what you can do is you can create these very, very lifelike uh, personas, avatars, and people seem quite interested and ready to interact with them as though they're real people. And I think that this is, mm -hmm. this is both kind of intriguing and has some positive dimensions, but it's also very dystopian and kind of, you know, I think we're, you know, we're at the very beginning of all this and uh, it's fascinating to see where it's, where it's going to go, um, you know, in our world of search and SEO, uh, there's a set of sort of narrower considerations, but I think there's a lot that, you know, we're going to see over the next 
handful of years that's going to look make the future look very different from the era that we you know it'd be as different for people that grow up in that time as the yeah. pre-internet era is for us when we say oh, i remember back when you you know this happened or that happened before the internet before mobile i, before st I still i still think that that the audience for that exactly that kind of fake interaction that you're talking about greg i think is pretty narrow i mean i think that that's that like clearly to me mark zuckerberg bet on the wrong thing with the metaverse and or at least facebook's conception of the metaverse um i just i don't see that having widespread appeal outside of a very narrow band of technology forward sort of well, um less socially less socially integrated millennials so, or well Gen Z's. We, we i i don't want to you know we're we're at, we're basically at the end of the session here so um uh i, I don't want to sort of digress into this whole debate but i i would i would have a debate with you about that i mean i think there are yep. going to be all kinds of strange and interesting and scary things that are ha happening around well, you know all get of those ready issues. for mike's avatar <laughs> well exactly i mean this you know whatever uh uh you won't zuckerberg miss me when i'm gone then swipe, Zuck, then zuckerberg could, did could a darling, did a whole swipe right or swipe left depending on which one she wanted to talk to in a given moment that would be that that would be the, the killer app you know I, I i'll tell you i'll tell you i i bet you right now there will be a business within 5 years where you take your you interview your parents who are nearing the end of their life and you create an avatar with their mm. their thoughts and their the transcripts to the the video you ask them a whole bunch of questions and then you fire up that you know that mobile app or whatever it is and you're going to yeah. you know where you pay a subscription for that and you're going to be able to talk to your deceased relative i mm. i you know that that's somebody's going to do that i suspect and um you know they're already talking about they're already talking about robots you know that have ai for senior care as companionship mm -hmm. for seniors i mean that's the movie whatever with frank langella that movie has a you know i don't know what it was bob or frank frank i think it was and this this stuff that has been the, in the realm of of kind of dystopian fiction and science fiction is coming in the next decade it's all coming in the next decade in the future of therapy is AI based, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, people will be talking to AI therapists. I mean, there's legal and regulatory obstacles to that, but that's a much cheaper thing to do than pay $250 an hour for some human. And, you know, maybe just as good. There are a lot of bad therapists out there. You train, a, <laughs> a, a, you tra oh, totally. I mean, I've been to them. I've been to all of the bad therapists. If you train, <laughs> if you train an AI bot with some really high quality material, um, that's going to be, ex make it accessible for, you know, it's a mental health app, right? With all the mm -hmm. disclaimers, that's going to be, that's, that, that's another startup idea. I'm coming up with all the great AI startup ideas right now. Man. So good, good start right. to 2024 for aspiring entrepreneurs <laughs> out there. Just come and listen to Greg, Greg's ideas and put them into play. Yes. Yes. You can, you can pay me. There's a, there's a whole, there's a, there's a whole, uh, there's some sort of uh, platform I forget the name where you where they sign up payment. It's like Cameo, but it's like for smart people, and so <laughs> you, you pay you pay some amount of money to talk to one of these people that you could otherwise never talk to because you're the small mm. the small fish and they're the you know the famous person. And so um, mm. that's what I'm going to do. If you want a lot of great winning AI uh, consumer ideas, uh, I'll be having office hours. Later. What's your Venmo account? Uh, I, you know, I what? don't have a Venmo account anymore. Oh, yeah. I don't have a Venmo account. I, I, I had some fraud. I had some fraud on Venmo, and I got really oh. mad at them because they were absolutely unhelpful, and so I stopped using them. So much for that. I was going to have people send you money for these ideas and see how much we got. Yeah, that's our <laughs> that's our that's our new business model. All right. All right. Anyway, all right. So, uh, welcome to 2024. It's going to be a really interesting year we got the election coming up in november we got all kinds of stuff going on with legal cases there's going to be a lot to talk about so stay with us tell your friends send us money all of that <laughs>
Thanks for joining David, Mike, and Greg. To stay on top of the latest developments in local, subscribe to our newsletter at nearmedia.co. We'll see you next week.